Hello and welcome to News Click. We have with us here Mr. Veera Singham Ananda Sangari, a very senior and a distinguished political leader of the Tamil United Liberation Front in Sri Lanka. We shall discuss with him the current political situation in Sri Lanka and also, in brief, the contours of a political solution that he has in his mind. Welcome to News Click, Mr. Right. Ananda Sangari. Uh, first of all, I'd like to ask you, your party won uh, the recently held local elections in the war-affected uh, Kirinochi district. So you must have seen the plight of the people from close quarters. How is the situation now? Has the re rehabilitation process started? Even without the elections, you see, I am with the, I am in touch with the electorate. Things are uh, very horrible in the city. The, the condition, living conditions are very bad. Although the government is boasting about that they are doing well. No, I am not at all satisfied. Because Kulinachi and Mulletu are two districts where people had been moved out without leaving behind a single soul. Even animals, animals usually were in that stray, you see. So in a situation like that, when the government uh, resettled them, uh, they didn't take it, their resettlement very seriously. They came back to see their houses without roofs. Their furniture missing. The windows and doors are missing. Uh, the houses are virtually raised to the ground. The government gave them a few tin sheets, it's about 12 or and uh, some with uh, some wooden, some timber and some uh, no timber. I don't know what the government expects them to do with that and a few uh, 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 little uh, dry provisions, you see, supplied by the World Food Organization. If anybody thinks, you see, that this is sufficient to rebuild a, a house, you see, in where four or five people live, you see, very comfortably with all facilities, then uh, we have we make a mistake. Uh, I am I am not at all convinced that even a single uh, household uh, have gone back to their old uh, uh, life. So it is surprising that considering that they are in still so much uh, misery, that uh, the government's promise of an economic development program has not really attracted uh, them and uh, they have actually voted uh, uh, firmly for uh, parties which are articulating a far more stronger political solution, right? I asked the government through you. Who, was there, who is bothered about development when I am uh, looking for my wife, my looking for my children, the wife is looking for the husband, people are virtually starving, children are dying without uh, proper uh, uh, medical facilities, children, uh, small children are without uh, sufficient uh, milk food. Who is worried about development? First question I am asking the government. Secondly, what is the development they are doing? Putting up houses for the army. Some buildings for the uh, various government uh, offices. Let them show one development work which, uh, which uh, one can feel proud of or, or call it uh, worthy of uh, categorizing it as a development project. So do you think the government is sincere at all about the need for a political solution and addressing these core issues of uh, rehabilitation? You know, something is radically wrong with the government. You know, everything was okay. I, I, at one stage I thought we have a good president. Uh, things are going to be okay. And he himself also gave that impression. Impression, making different, various references. We thought he was uh, very honest and sincere. But I don't know whether uh, he is doing things on his own. He has others uh, to do things for him. In fact, in one of my letters I wrote to him, you are mind the Sindhanya. Sindhanya means thinking. Uh, uh, based on which uses you are planning development, various other things, you see. The mind the Sindhanya is now either polluted, or diluted. Furthermore, uh, the Sindhania of so many people are being smuggled into your Sindhania and you are now under compelling circumstances accept them as your Sindhania. This is not what the people expected from you. In fact, I wrote him like that. I sense a lot of disappointment. Disappoint, lot of disappointment. People are thoroughly disappointed. Right. So, so, there is this talk of a new parliamentary select committee that would actually address the question of a political solution. There is also some degree of betrayal uh, that 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 one perceives based on what the government is saying in, in terms of that in terms of the fact that they are not willing to have talks with the TNA even though the TNA seems to have been the legitimate voice of the Tamil people. What would be your take? Uh, total betrayal, I would call it. Total, because this is a problem that is more than 60 years old. I had lived through that period, you see, from the time we got independence up to now, you see. From the, at that time, I was mature enough to understand things. There was a, or there was school going. Up to now, I had lived through this period and uh, no uh, aware of what and what things happened. All I faced good things and bad things. 
I want to know from the government how many more centuries you want to identify what the problems uh, of the Tamils are and, uh, and how to solve it. This is a matter that is going on. To be very more correct, we will start with the passing of the single only act. You see, in violation of the section 29, which is perhaps the only provision uh, safeguard the minorities had in the old constitution. Then the government conveniently dropped it, you see, and they adopted a new constitution without similar provision in the new constitution. They know what, the, what we want. We are not asking for uh, what is it, uh, honey, milk and honey, you see. We want to live like you. We want the people to live as equal. Let no one feel superior to the other or inferior to the other. If that is, that is the problem we have. There are people who are asking us, oh, what is your problem, sir? Now the war is on. War was, not, was never our problem. Our problems are economical, uh, education, in many, in almost in all fields there was discrimination. And the discrimination, we thought after the eradication of the LTT, the discrimination will stop and the government will uh, use its good office to win over the minority. Now the, every action taken by the government is driving the minorities far away from the government. Quickly sir, what kind of sequence of steps would you now advise? You will now tell the government as an advice. Simple, no? I had been telling the president, please go before the TV. You tell the country that you are elected president for the whole country, not for a particular community or a religious group. Then tell them, now that you have elected me as the president, you have given me a mandate to solve the problem that the country is facing. Leave it to me. Without betraying you, without betraying any community, without harming any community, without harming any group of people in the country. I will solve the problem. You tr trust me and hand over the problem to me and forget about it. I will see that everyone in this country will live peacefully and uh, with, uh, more sec with more security of life and things like that. Why can't the government do that? The president can easily do that. Uh, finally, sir, uh, yesterday something positive happened. The emergency laws which were in place for a long time have finally been removed. So, uh, hopefully this is, uh, it is going to herald some progressive change now? If they have removed it, it is for, it is a, for a bad turn uh, in the life of the people. We are, they have already started harassing our people. Right. Army had taken, they, they, they go and uh, they have started harassing young boys, you see. This is what happened 30 years back. The army and the, name, the police was responsible for the, uh, for the arming of the groups you see in Sri Lanka 30, 35 years back. The government probably wants that again, you know, so that they can comfortably sit in the, on the, on the shoulders of the Yafna man and have a good ride, you see. If the government is serious, you know, now the government openly tells the whole world, you know, we have eradicated terrorism. Now, what is the need for the army there? What is the need for the army to be there? Now, uh, they can easily say, you now everything is okay. They can now withdraw. They are not withdrawing. Every village in Klinochi, there is an army camp. Every village in Klinochi, they are, they barbed wire certain areas, you see, and prevented the owners to, from owners from getting into the land. Their argument, you know, it is, it is a silly argument. You see. No, no man, educated man, will talk like that. There are some army chaps who say, "I say this is land we, we grabbed from the LTD, not from you." What an idiotic thing to say that. They never, you know, they never grabbed the land from the LTD. The LTD held it under compulsion, under by force, you see. Uh, and you know, the, it took. Nearly a year for the government to return the houses in which I was living. It was not my own house. I don't. I am perhaps one of the only one and the only person who is not owing any land in Kalinochi or anywhere else. But I lived in the land. You see, I had a right to go back to the land. The government deliberately kept it for nearly seven eight months. You see. So you are telling us that demilitarization and sincerity of effort in trying to convince yeah, the people are the need of the army. Our first priority today is demilitarization. People are being harassed by the army at every turn, even to have a discussion about the development of a, of, a, of a temple, we have to inform the army. For a sports meet, army must be there. For a, for a school, school function, where you find only like, say, a preschool function, they, the army expects uh, them to be invited. So this we don't know. No. This is not democracy. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for this Thank short you. interview that you have given us, uh, considering your uh, uh, tough schedule as well.